gentlemen, and welcome to the Victor County Wellness Center in Victor County, Nova Scotia. Getting you ready for this afternoon or this evening's Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League game between the visiting South Shore Lumberjacks and the hometown Pictou County Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers. This is Petter Picto Sports, and my name is Michael Petter. Thank you so much for tuning in for this broadcast. Should be a good game. A couple of teams that are just separated by just one single point in the standings right now. A very close uh, standings in the Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League, where third place and 11th place are separated by just four points. Granted, we are still quite early in the season, but still, three teams tied with eight points, two teams at six, another three at five points, and then a team with four points. And these are two of those teams who are in that mix of four points separating third place and 11th place in the 12-team league. The South Shore Major Bantam Lumberjacks come in with a record of two, three, and one. So they are one of those two, one of those three teams sitting at five points on the season, tied with Bedford and the Rangers for eighth place in the league. While the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers, excuse me. <laughs> The Marywell Major Band of Bombers at two and five are at four points alone in 11th place, but again, just four points back of third. If you want to look that far ahead, just two points back of sixth place. So a victory tonight, depending on what happens in the games elsewhere, could very well move team, either one of these teams, well up to standings depending on what happens, as mentioned elsewhere, in the Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League. Speaking of the rest of today's schedule, we'll take a quick look and let you know that also a 5.30 start in Bedford for Bedford Sports Bridge Barons against Excel Physio, who play out of Halifax. A 6.30 start for the Pearl Bearcats visiting the St. Margaret's Bay Arena to take on the Gulls. A 7.15 start for the Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm out of Pearl Harbor against the Jungle Jim Cougars. That will be played at the Amera Center North Side up in Royalty Fratton. The Novas against the All Credit Auto Rangers. They play out of the East Hands Sportsplex, the Keith Miller Arena. That game actually not till tomorrow. So we've only got the four games on the schedule tonight. Eight of the 12 teams in the league in action this evening. in let's take a look at some of the keys to tonight's game and the first key as far as the bombers are concerned has to be getting some more scoring right now they have scored just 17 goals in their seven games to this point and only one player is averaging or two players are averaging better than a point per game that's landon sim with five goals and five assists in seven games ten points over those seven games lucas canning Six points with two goals and four assists in five games played. He also missed two games earlier this season. Other than that, players are most of the players are not even averaging half a point per game. They need to get some more offense going if they want to be successful. On the flip side, you look at the South Shore Lumberjacks and what they have done this season. Luke Woodworth is absolutely on a tear. He's only played three games so far this year, but he has seven points in those three games, four goals and three assists. Ryan Hopkins averaging a point per game. Everybody else sitting around the lower end of the scoring spectrum. But Woodworth obviously is absent in a number of games, a big key there, so he's getting him back and rolling as he has been in the last few games. Obviously a big key, and he is in the lineup tonight. The second key for the game, Thomas Garraby had a great game for the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers uh, recently. The game that he played against um, against Excel Physio just a couple of weeks ago, 
He uh, stood on his head and had an absolutely fantastic game. Unfortunately, he faced a multitude of shots, and that came back to uh, came back to haunt him and the team as he gave up six goals. He also came in and played part of the game against the Jungle Gym Cougars on Sunday afternoon. Gave up two goals coming in playing uh, most of the third period after an injury to Cole Goss. Good news for the Bombers. Goss is available and dressed tonight, but it is going to be Garrafee who's going to start. Thomas Garrafee with a record of 0-3 right now, but his biggest problem has not been the goals he's been giving up, because although he has given up quite a few, it really has been the offense in front of him. He does have a 6.75 goals against average, which obviously is a number that he'd want to have greatly improved. But if you were to look at his save percentage, which unfortunately does not get tracked in this league, his save percentage would be probably, if I had to guess, among some of the best in the Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League. At the other end of the ice tonight, Joe Hocko is going to need to have a good game for the Lumberjacks. He comes in with a record of 1-2. and two. I should have mentioned Garrafee's record is 0-3, but again, a big part of that has to do with the uh, goal support that he hasn't been getting. Yes, he's given up a bunch of goals, but it's been because he hasn't been getting the offensive support. He's had the puck in his end of the ice a fair bit of the time. Joey Hocko at the other end with a record of 1-2 and two with 2.90 goals against average, giving up nine goals in three games plus in overtime. He played in the game that the... Uh, that the uh, so sore Lumberjacks lost by uh, by way of a shootout. Of course, the Lumberjacks, this is a new moniker for them this season. As of last year, they were still referred to as the Western Hurricanes. So uh, the Lumberjacks, a uh, new look for them, and they come in with the jerseys that the fans of the Maritime Hockey League would be very familiar with of the South Shore Lumberjacks of that level with the basically the Columbus Blue Jacket uh, blue with the white and red trim nice big white numbers on the back nice big lettering of the names on the back as well which uh, as a lot of people know I as a play-by-play -play guy I put a lot of uh, emphasis when I'm watching the game on what those unis look like, how easy they are to see, and how easy it is to call a game with a team that's got those kinds of jerseys but for these Lumberjacks. As I'll give you a quick peek at them here. There we go. Look at the back of those jerseys. Nice big numbers. Nice big names to read backs of those jerseys and we've got the lumberjacks out here. Actually I stand corrected, it's Ian Porter who's getting the start for the Lumberjacks. He also has a one and two record. A 3.67 goals against average. As we take a look at the door for the South Shore or for the Wherewell Bombers and you can see nobody there quite yet. The doorway is still empty as we await the Bombers making their way on onto the ice. And here they come, led by their captain, Landon Sim. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am flying solo tonight, literally. Uh, I'm going to be doing the camera work and the play-by-play -play at the same time. So I ask uh, for your patience if the camera work is a little bit shaky at times. I'm going to be trying to do both, trying my best to get both going as best as I can. So right now, let's send things downstairs for the pregame introductions.
County Wellness Center. The one critique I would have about these jerseys for the Lumberjacks, no numbers on the sleeves. Looks like it's going to be Woodworth out there to start the game with Mayer. players with the last name Hopkins on this South Shore team. For the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers, it's going to be Canning, Avery, and McInnes up front with Steele and Young on the back end in the draw. Sends the puck down into the Bomber zone and right away Garapu has to deal with the puck. At the side of the net, played to the line, not out, kept in there by Talbot. That shot gets steered away. Hopkins now, his shot goes off the body and down the length of the ice. Hustling back after it, Talbot, he's got Avery right on top of him. Talbot able to play the puck to Woodworth. Woodworth gets it ahead. And coming through center is Mayer. Mayer, does that go off a stick and into the corner, wrapped around the boards, kept in at the line by Connors. He goes to play it across, but it's taken away. Try to spring Avery. That gets disrupted at the South Shore blue line. And now Coleman back the other way. Coleman dumps it down into the corner. Going in after it there is Cook. Cook in the corner, battling there with Sim. Landon Sim, the captain, able to get the puck away from him. Gets it ahead. And sending it down the length of the ice is Farrell. That'll be an icing call with just one minute, seven seconds gone here in the opening period. And the faceoff will come back down into the Wherewell Bombers end. Because I am working solo tonight, I'm going to be uh, not doing a whole bunch of fancy zooms and whatnot. Gonna have to just keep the camera on a wide angle because I'm trying to focus on doing two things at once. Sim brings the puck in, but already in offside were both of his line mates, but being Blaze McDonald and the other line mate there, Ben Wallace. So line changes. As the faceoff is outside the zone, Zwicker will win the draw for the Lumberjacks. Plays, puck is played back to Harlow. Harlow rings it around the board, kept in at the line there, at least momentarily by Noftel. Now Noftel gets it back again at center ice. Noftel works it back to his defense partner. Comes back to Noftel again from contact. Now McKinnon plays it ahead, intended for McKay. But that gets broken up, and now McKinnon plays it back to Contuck again. McKinnon coming through, or sorry, that's, uh, that was Nicholas coming through center. Attempted dump in, goes off a of body. Now it's played back to Knopfel once again. He plays it off the wall, nobody there for the Bombers. And coming back the other way now, here comes Woodworth. Woodworth into the bomber zone. Sends it down behind the net, plays it out towards the front. Buck is in the crease and able to catch it. And hang on for a faceoff is Thomas Garapi. 2.13 gone here in the first period. And the Bombers yet to have puck possession in the Lumberjack zone. Granted, it's only two minutes and 13 seconds, but still a uh, troubling sign if you're a supporter of the Wherewell Bombers. McKinnon, or sorry, Woodworth rather, takes a bump there from Canning. Buck comes to the line and hops over the stick of Talbot. Race for it, getting to it first there and getting a shot that goes off the side of the net. Plays McDonald. McDonald gets it back again, but can't get a second shot away. Steele now plays it down all the way around the boards. Coming around to the near side, doesn't get to Young. Instead, it gets to Mayer, who will send it down the length of the ice, and that'll be an icing call with 2.45, as you can see on the screen. Gone here in the first period. 15-minute periods for both the first and the second, and then a full traditional 20-minute period for the third. Again, a big thanks to everybody who is here watching the game here on Petter Picto Sports. If you have any comments or questions, Throughout the course of the broadcast, by all means, there is that little chat bar at the side of the screen. I'd love to hear from you. First off, I guess 
I guess maybe the first and most important question is, can you hear? Nope. Is can you hear me okay? I never quite trust this system to work the way I want it to, so somebody could let me know that yes, the audio is coming through. Meanwhile, coming in with the puck there, as the net gets knocked off of its moorings, that was Will Cook leading the rush. Can you hear me? Check one, two, check one, two. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Anybody listening on the broadcast, can you hear me okay? Is the microphone picking me up properly? Anyone, anyone? Off of the draw, in behind the net. Picking up the puck there is Ray Fuse. He ends up popping it up, comes out, and Hopkins, Kyle Hopkins, ends up sending it back out to center. Now it comes back into the Lumberjack zone once again, into the corner there, Wallace. They'll send it behind the net. Out in front intended for Sim, but the pass is a little bit too far. And it ends up going to the line and all the way out. Now back to get it is Dylan Conta. Conta will gain the red line, then dump the puck in. Coming out of his net to play it there, Porter. He leaves it for his defenseman. Passed ahead, misses the target. Knoftal goes to dump it back in deep. But that gets intercepted. And out comes Hopkins. Kyle Hopkins puts it right in onto the goaltender. Garropy. And Garropy makes the save and hangs on for a faceoff. Now 3.55. Don and Caper, thank you for the input. Good to know that I am coming through loud and clear. Like I say, I always am a little paranoid that the system isn't going to work the way it's supposed to. Off of the draw, there's a shot. It is blocked. And the Bombers come out. At the far wall there, working his way down is Adam Farrell. Also in there helping out is McKinnon. Working against the defenseman, Barry. And now helping out, Zwicker wraps it around the boards to the near side. To the line, but not out. Nicholas will hold it in there. Now Huskins trying to get it out. Puck is sent back in deep, however, and going back to get it is Caden Harlow. Harlow works it up the wall, gets all the way out, and Steele dumps it back in again. It comes out, then goes back in again, and back to get it once again is Caden Harlow. Harlow now makes the pass ahead. That's for Huskins. Huskins now working his way through center ice. Takes a bump from Avery. Also coming in to help out is Canning. Here's Lucas Canning working his way back down the far wall. Canning gets stripped up, and that'll be the first penalty of the game. Coming at 4.52 of the first period. It will be a tripping call against Keegan McDermott. So at 4.52 of the first period, McDermott goes off for the hook. And the first power play of the game for the Rearwell Major Bank and Bombers. Off of the draw, Bombers with possession. Puck played to the line, Young tees it up, there's a shot. Save made. Back to the line, Young again, another shot, that one goes wide. And now down in the corner, working the puck is Blaze McDonald. McDonald goes behind the net, out in the far corner. Loses control of it momentarily, but able to get it back. McDonald still working the puck. Plays it to the line. And that gets intercepted and sent down the length of the ice. 30 seconds gone in the man advantage. Sim now picks up the puck from in front of his own net. We've got some pushing and shoving behind the play that's going to lead to another Lumberjack penalty. And at 5.35, the captain, Woodworth, is going to go for head contact. So the Bombers will get an extended five on three. One minute and 17 seconds of five on three. Off of the draw, lays McDonald at the point, lays it across to Noftal, back to McDonald. McDonald down to Sim. Sim back to Knopf, or that's not Knoftal, rather, that's 16 Canning. Canning now will back up with the puck. Canning tees it up. That gets blocked on its way in. Sim scores! Landon Sim 
gives the Bombers a power play goal on the five on three. And it is one nothing. Where well, Major Vance and Bombers. Five minutes, 53 seconds into the first period. And as you can see on the board, there's still three minutes and 42 seconds of the double minor to Woodworth left to work with. Landon Sim, and now coming in right off the bat, there's a chance for Farrell. And the puck will be sent down the length of the ice. Broken up there by Zwicker. Sim from Avery, and I didn't catch the second assist. I believe the second assist should go to Young. Or sorry, go to uh, Cannon. But we'll uh, try and see if we can get confirmation of that later. Anyway, it's Sim's sixth goal, 11th point of the season, coming on the power play at 553. And here come the Bombers back in again. There's a shot blocker save, puck loose in front. Chance for Wallace, but then the puck sent down the length of the ice. 2:37 left to go in the double minor to Woodworth. Battling in the corner there, able to kill off a few valuable seconds. Now the puck comes to the near side and working out. Pass ahead for McKinnis. McKinnis gets it back again, sends it in, not very deep, and it's sent back. Down the length of the ice. Played off the stick there of Sellers. And then Sellers goes back and picks up the puck and will lead the rush. Sellers goes across to the far side for McKinnis. McKinnis into the zone. He gets knocked down. Coming in to follow up. Livingston plays it across for Sellers. Sellers gets it down low. Avery with a chance. There's a block, a save. And the puck ends up going to Hopkins. Bombers get it back again. Shot taken by Sellers, loose in front. There's a chance for Blaze McDonald and able to make yet another save as Ian Porter. Minute 36 left to go in the man advantage. Technically the third man advantage of the game for the Bombers as the double minor counts as two power plays. So they are now one for two with a minute 20 left in their third power play. Kiefer Avery with the puck. Avery gets the pass ahead. Getting a piece of that was Chase Nicholas. No, he didn't. So that's going to be an icing call. 6.35 on the clock, 1.10 on the double minor to Woodward. at 5.53, 53 seconds left now in this third power play of the game and coming down with the puck was Canning into the corner, Avery. Avery back to the line, contact, contact, looking, looking, now he takes the shot, save me. Puck steered over to the far corner, Avery is there, plays it back to the line, but not able to hold the line was Lucas Canning. Canning gets it back ahead. Avery doesn't take that pass cleanly, and it's sent back down the length of the ice, back to get it is Kontuk. Kontuk, working his way around. Kontuk, battling there with Cook. Coming back to help out is the captain, Sim. Sim avoids Lamborn. Sim's still on it, now he loses it to Lamborn, and back out to center as the penalties are about, or penalty is about to expire. Shot in. There by Steele, picking up the puck was, Lam or was uh, Hopkins. Now delayed offside against the Lumberjacks. That'll give the Bombers a chance to get things back organized. Just over five minutes left to go here in the first period. Bombers leading it 1-0. There's a turnover to Wallace. Wallace with the shot. And that doesn't miss by a whole bunch. Back to the line. Young send, tries to send it back down low. That's gloved down by Woodward. And out comes Woodworth, the captain of the Lumberjacks. Woodworth stops. 
Plays it back to the line intended for Harlow, but Harlow can't receive the pass cleanly and it goes all the way back down into the Lumberjack zone. He'll play it across there for Barry. Jack Barry works it ahead. That's into the skates of Cody McKay. He has trouble finding it when he does. Can't do much with it. To the line and Kontuk fans on his shot and everybody has to come back out. Here's Noftal. Noftal gets it ahead intended for McKay. Misses that pass and Zwicker will send it to Huskins who dumps the puck down into the Bomber zone. Wallace now finds McKay. McKay coming in. Takes the shot. Save made. Hanging on for a faceoff as right now unfamiliar territory for these Bombers as they are out shooting the Lumberjacks 10-3. A big part of that is the amount of power play time that they've had certainly. But 10 shots on goal in the first 10 minutes, 48 seconds. A great start for these Bombers and they win another offensive zone faceoff. Puck down into the corner for Sim. Sim gives it to uh, McKinnon out towards the front. They take a couple of whacks at it there, but it's steered aside. And out comes Ray Fuse. He tries to get it ahead for Cook. Cook gets it taken away from him. And Sim gets it back again. Here comes Landon Sim with the shot. That's blocked. Puck goes down below the goal line. McKinnon will play it back to the line. Holding there is Livingston. Now the puck comes out. Livingston will play it to Sellers. Sellers gains the red line, dumps it back in. Coming out of the net to play it there, Porter. He leaves it for Hopkins. Now there's a battle along the near side wall and out comes the puck to Cook. Cook gets it taken away from him by Blaze McDonald. Sent down the length of the ice. Not hard enough for an icing. Now Avery, or Young, rather, at the blue line, holds the line momentarily. Canning able to get it in, but then the Lumberjacks with the DDD pass with it now is McDermott. He loses control, but it ends up being an offside against the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers with three minutes left to go here in the first period. one nothing in favor of the hometown Bombers off of the power play goal by Sim at 5.53 of the first period. Sim's sixth goal and 11th point of the season. Panning in to take the draw. Now he'll get waved out of the faceoff circle. So Avery will come in to take it against Woodworth. Avery off of the draw, doesn't get control of it. Woodworth doesn't do, is finally able to pick up some control and able to get it across the line of the Bombers. Back to get it now though, Tanner Steele. Steele will work it up the wall for McInnes. McInnes tries to feed it to Canning, but that gets broken up. Woodworth now. Tries to get it through for Mayer. Mayer along the wall. Young in there. Woodworth in there. McKinnis in there. Now the D to D pass intended for Hopkins. Ryan Hopkins misses the target. And Hopkins has to carry it back in. Hopkins goes to drop it off. There's Woodworth with a shot. And the save made by Garropy. Steered down into the near side wall. Off the wall, Hopkins can't hold the line. There, we'll send it back. As Steele picks up. Steele, pass ahead, Canning deflects it. Hopkins loses it there. Avery coming in, Kiefer Avery with a shot, save made. And hanging on for the faceoff, although I'm not sure if he actually held it or not. Ian Porter, the referee, says it was frozen enough and blows the whistle. Under two minutes left to go here in the first period. Bombers with the one nothing lead and with control, 11-4, the shot's on goal right now. Puck is played back to the line. Here's Noftal with the shot. Right into the bread basket of Porter. And that's another save for Ian Porter. This is my, I believe my fourth Bombers game this season, if I'm doing the math correctly. And I would have to say that this is by far, in my opinion, the best period of hockey that I've seen the Bombers play so far this season. My two cents for what it's worth, which is about two cents, which of course rounds down. Coming in, there's Cook with a shot. Garrett be able to steer that one aside. 
Now Rayfuse gets knocked down in the corner. Trying to get to it is Coleman. He gets it taken away from him by Contuck, who works it up the wall. Trying to get it out now is Wallace. As four or five players, six players in there in the battle. Woodworth gets it out for Coleman. Coleman can't get his stick on it, however. Now Coleman avoids the hit of Farrell. Can't avoid the hit of Nicholas. Now Woodworth with some nifty stick work. But the puck is turned over to Contact, who gets it out to center. And now following up on the play, here comes Nicholas. He tries to center it there in front. And hanging on for a faceoff, 40.8 seconds left to go in the period. As Porter is able to get his big mid on that one and hold it for a faceoff. 13 to 5 now, the Bombers out shooting the South Shore Lumberjacks. Off of the draw, the puck comes to Hopkins. He's able to get it out. And to Huskins, here comes Huskins in. Garrafee with the save. The rebound comes far enough back that Mayer is able to get a shot. And the net ends up getting dislodged as a whole bunch of guys were coming in. Exactly 30 seconds left to go here in the period. Still just the one goal in this game, and it was that first period or that power play marker just under six minutes in. Landon Sim, his sixth of the season. Off of the draw, puck comes to the line. Hopkins sends it down low. Young misplays it. Woodworth gets it out in front. Trying to get a stick on it was, uh, was Mayer, but he couldn't get it. And the puck is sent out and down the ice. Getting there was Canning. He couldn't center the puck. Comes to Mayer. Six seconds left in the period. Sim now plays it into the wall as that will pretty much do it for the first period. About as good of a first period as you could ask for from a Bombers perspective as they outshoot the Jacks 13 to 7. going to take a quick pause while they take a quick pause. This evening, the other one will be right on this same sheet of ice right after this and right here on Ustream TV as the Subway Northern Selects host the Northern Lightning from Northern Manitoba in the Nova Scotia Female Midget Hockey League. So we'll bring you that action right after this one. It'll be on this very same channel so you can stick around for both games. Meanwhile, We've started the second period. There's Woodworth with a chance. It gets blocked with Woodworth with another chance. And Garrafee able to make the save just 26 seconds into the period. And Garrafee makes his first save of this first period. Try to make a late change. Referee says no dice. Off of the draw. Bombers get possession and out they come. Here's plays McDonald with the puck. McDonald makes a move. McDonald comes in and he scores. What a goal by Blaze McDonald. And it is 2 0 for the Bombers. Blaze McDonald, his third goal, third point of the season. 35 seconds into the second period. And the Bombers lead it two to nothing.
So McDonald from Avery is the call on that one, just 35 seconds into this second period, and the Bombers lead it by two, two to nothing. Sent down into the zone. For Avery, that is his second assist. Sorry, I'm trying to write down this information as well. McDonald from Avery. At just 35 seconds. And the Werewell Major Bank and Bombers are now ahead two to nothing. Off of the draw, Lumberjacks get the puck into the Bombers zone. Backing up with it there, Livingston, he plays it across. Puck is turned over and Cook will get possession down in the corner. He's being bothered by Livingston. Now they play it back to the line. Back there with the shot was Harlow and making the save Garropy with 1.37 now gone in this second period. Faceoff will remain in the bomber zone to the left of goaltender Thomas Garropy. Puck played to the line. Harlow tries to play it back down low. That doesn't quite work. Now Harlow gets it to Coleman. Coleman can't do much with it there as they battle along the boards. Coleman's in there, Livingston's in there. Coleman able to send it down into the corner, throws it towards the front of the net, and that'll be cleared away, but only as far as the line. Harlow is there, and he gets it down to one of his forwards, that is Cook. Cook, he loses the puck, and the Werewell Major Manton Bomber is able to come out. McKinnon tries to get it into the Lumberjack zone, but it ends up coming up and hitting one of the players on the Bomber bench. So a 2-13 gone here in the second period. We'll get the face off just outside the Lumberjack blue line. 2-0 off of goals from Landon Sim and Blaze McDonald. For Sim is sixth, for McDonald is third. If you are just joining us, that is what has brought this scoreline to the 2-0 that it is in favor of the We're Well Major Bantam Bombers of Pitco County. Puck was sent in onto Ian Porter. He gloves it down and hangs on for a faceoff. And again, the Bombers trying to make a late change. not work and now I believe we're going to see a penalty to the Bombers we are indeed going to see a penalty to the Bombers for delay of game coming at 218 For so sure, that is power play number one. As going over to serve it will be one of the goal scorers, Blaze McDonald. And the South Shore Lumberjacks get their first power play of the night. A delay of game bench minor to the Werewell Bombers. Cook taking the draw against Sim. Cook gets the puck out of the corner. Plays it back to the line. Working along the line now to Woodworth. Woodworth can't find it, and Wallace is able to send it out to center. Hopkins back to pick up. Plays it ahead for Cook. Cook will carry across the blue line, all the way down to the half wall, stops there, gets things organized, plays it back to Hopkins. Hopkins to Woodworth. Woodworth goes across, intended for Cook. The puck was deflected, but Cook was able to chase it down and play it back to Hopkins. To Woodworth. Woodworth skating it down into the corner, takes a bump from Young, gets it around to the far corner for Cook. Cook, back to the line, Hopkins. Hopkins, back to Cook again. Back to Hopkins, takes the shot, Garropy the save. 49 seconds gone in this penalty. The bench minor for, two, or for delay of game. Penalty being served by number five, Blaze McDonald. McDonald, of course, had the goal earlier this period for the Werewell 
Major Bantam Bombers, the goal that made it 2 nothing, which is where we stand right now. Right off of the draw, there's a chance for Huskins. And then Huskins coming in after the whistle. Woodworth trying to plead the case for his man, but Huskins is going to go off for slashing the goaltender. And so we will now see a minute and seven seconds of four on four. This coming at 3.11 of the second period. Huskins for the slash. So South Shore now 0 for 1 on the power play as their power play ended as a result of that call. A minute and two left in this four on four before the Lumberjacks go shorthanded for the fourth time and the Bombers get their fourth man advantage. Woodworth with the puck as we play here four on four. Tried to get it to Cook. That pass disrupted just enough by Avery. Cook able to win it back though at center ice and dump it down into the bomber zone. Woodward gets there first. Woodward plays it to the line. Shot from the line taken by the defenseman. That is Hopkins, I do believe. Or Connors, rather. Connors took, takes the shot. Garrity makes the save. And hangs on for a faceoff. 35 seconds of four on four left. 11-17 left to go here in this second period. Wicker wins the draw back, but not far enough back to get it to either of his defensemen. Now Sim gives his man a bump. Young will pick up the loose puck. Young loses it, try to throw it out in front. Sim there to intercept. Now it comes to Canning. Gets it to the line, not out, kept in there by Hopkins. And now backing up with it is looking to get a number here. That's Canning. Lucas Canning coming into the zone. Canning throws it towards the front of the net. That's steered away by Hopkins. Now played back to the line for Young. Young gives to McKinnon. McKinnon giving his man a bump back to the line as the Bombers are now on the power play with the puck there. McDonald tried to center it. Canning fanned a bit on that shot. Now Young plays it to McKinnon. McKinnon for Sim. Sim trying to get away from Hopkins. Sim still with the puck. Plays it back now to Young. Young with the shot. Steered to the near corner. Sim able to chase it down there. Takes a bump from Hopkins. Or Hopkins, excuse me. Now Sim all the way at the far side. Sim still with the puck. Goes across for McKinnon, who would have had some open net to work with, but he doesn't take the pass cleanly. Now Young plays it across there to Canning. Canning with the shot. And the blocker save made there by Porter. Just three seconds left in the man advantage. Out towards the front of the net, it comes all the way back to Young. Young waits, sets the shot, there it is, puck is loose. Sim takes a shot at it. And it's sent down the length of the ice, and that'll be an icing call. With 5.22 gone here in this second period, we're all back to five on five. The Bombers now one for four with the man advantage. The Lumberjacks 0 for one. And everybody's back to full strength. Shots on goal favoring the Bombers, 19 to 13. Shots in this period, even at six apiece. Avery gets waved out of the face-off circle. Coming in to take the draw will be Chase Nicholas against Woodworth. Woodworth wins it down into the corner for Ryan Hopkins. He gets it up to Mayer, and Mayer now gives it ahead to Woodworth. Three on one. Woodworth coming in, takes the shot, and ends up missing the net near side as he was looking at it. Talbot works to get it back down low. Puck comes to Mayer. He goes to, we got a penalty coming up here as Talbot took a high hit. And so that'll be another man advantage for the Lumberjacks. Head contact is the call. This one coming at 544. Coming to Chase Nicholas. A four minute, so this will be South Shore's second and third power play. They are 0 for 1 with a man advantage from earlier this period. Woodworth 
Tied up in the corner there with Canning. There's a shot. Puck comes wrapping around the boards to the line and out as Ryan Hopkins takes it out to center right. Hopkins carries it across. Hopkins coming in, takes a shot. Save made there by Garrafey. Hopkins picks it back up again. Gives to Woodworth. Woodworth right in front. But Huskins couldn't get his stick on the puck. Now back to the line. Hopkins yet again to Woodworth. Woodworth takes the shot this time. Off the shoulder of Garrafey and over the net. Woodworth now in the corner. Back to the line for Hoskins. Or Hopkins, excuse me. Hopkins deflected there by Huskins. And it went into the corner. Now Hopkins gives to Woodworth. Centered for Hoskins. But he got his stick just lifted enough that he couldn't make contact. Now Huskins with the backhander. And Garrapy makes that save. 2.49 left to go in the double minor. Woodworth tees it up. Uh, Mayer was there looking for the rebound or for a deflection, but it was steered away by the goaltender, Garrapy. Now the puck comes out to center ice. Cook touches it, and that'll be an icing call. So there's Hopkins, Hopkins, Huskins. All on the same team. Ryan Hopkins, Kyle Hopkins, and Kiefer Huskins. Play-by-play man's nightmare. Puck comes into the zone. Connors. I mean, no offense to any of those players. They've all been really good players. It's just when things are moving quickly, it's tailor-made for a slip of the tongue. There's Kyle Hopkins. There's a shot. That goes off a of body and into the corner. Now Woodworth plays it back to Kyle Hopkins again. His shot goes off the leg of Coleman and into the corner. Now played down low for Mayer, or for uh, Hopkins, or for Zwicker, rather. Now back to the line, Kyle Hopkins. He gives to Woodworth, comes across near side. There's Connors with a shot. And that is wrapped all the way around the boards. Good hustle there by Kyle Hopkins to keep it in the zone. Now Connors with the shot. Garrafee the save. Buck is steered up into the corner. 140 left to go in the penalties. Connors can't hold the line. Now Sim coming out, working one-on-one. -on -one. Sim takes the shot. Easily steered aside by the goaltender, Porter, as there wasn't an awful lot on that shot. Now Woodworth coming back through. Woodworth into the zone. Woodworth! Couple of beautiful moves by Woodworth, but he ends up putting the shot wide. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Bombers able to get a few of their penalty killers changed up. 107 left to go in the man advantage. As the double minor for, to chase Nicholas for head contact continues into the zone. Huskins, he loses the puck at the blue line, but there to support him was Cook. Shot from Ryan Hopkins. Now the puck is on the back of the net. Comes out to the side, played back to Kyle. Kyle with the shot, that doesn't miss by much and Cook will pick up the puck. 35 seconds left in the man advantage. Shot, rebound, and Knopfdahl will get the rebound as far as Farrell, and Farrell coming in. Farrell now coming in shorthanded. Farrell with the chance, and he puts that one just off the post. Glorious chance for Kyle Farrell shorthanded, but the iron working in the favor of Ian Porter on that one. Now Huskins gets just a piece, does not get a piece of that puck. He thought he did, I thought he did. call against the Lumberjacks with just 10 seconds left in their man advantage. They are about to fall to 0 for 3 on the power play in this game. As the Bombers look to get back to 4 on 4 here, but that big 4 minute power play, one thing it did was full shots on goal almost even. It's now 21-20 in favor of the Bombers which means that in this period, shots are now 13 to eight in favor of the Lumberjacks. Puck comes loose out from center, and it ends up coming to Nick, uh, McInnes. He can't get much on a shot. Now Livingston will hold it in the line. Puck played around the boards, picked up behind the net there by McInnes. McKay coming in to help out as well. 
turned over. And McDermott able to bring it out to center, but it's brought right back in again. Here is McKinnis looking to get it to Avery. Couldn't get the pass through, so Avery just comes behind the net himself and picks up the puck. Kiefer Avery trying to get away from the check of Harlow. Can't do it, and Harlow will play the puck to the far wall where McDermott will pick up. McDermott skates it towards the middle of the ice, takes a bump from McKay, takes a slash from McKay, but is able to keep going. In pass intended for Lamborn, that gets intercepted. Puck comes out and then back in again. Bombers have a little bit of time while the Lumberjacks had to touch up. Now lead pass for Avery, but he's not able to get beyond Harlow. Cook down near wall, goes to make the pass far side for Rayfuse. Rayfuse gets it ahead for Coleman. Coleman slips up at the blue line and Livingston will pick up, play it around the boards for Nicholas. Nicholas in the corner. Livingston right there with him, but Cook for checking hard. Now Sim will come in and help out. And Landon Sim gets the puck out to McKinnon. Cameron McKinnon gives to Nicholas. Nicholas tries to make a cross ice pass. That's broken up by Rayfuse. Now it comes back to Nicholas again. And now it's sent down low into the corner. Three and a half to go here in the second period. Bombers leading it 2 0. Puck played out to center ice. Steele gives to Young. Young working it up the wall. And down the length of the ice. Connors creates possession for the Lumberjacks there. Pass too far in front of Cook. And Young gets it ahead. Hopkins gives his man a big bump, but Sim able to come in with the puck. Sim still with it. And a big save there by Ian Porter to keep it a 2-0 game. Now an attempt to clear the puck out of the zone doesn't work as the man gets knocked down. Holding the line there was McKinnon. Puck goes around to the far wall. This time it will come out as Steele was out at center ice waiting for it. He gets the pass ahead. And Farrell gets it back in across, but right back out again. And we're going to have too many men on the ice against the... Lumberjacks. So now one bench minor against each team. This one coming at 12:28. So sure, bench too many men. So this is power play number one, two, three, four, five. As the Bombers are one for four with the man advantage. Fifth power play of the night. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Hustling back to get it there. Steele, he'll play it around for Young. Young will pick up and work his way up the ice. Gets the puck to ahead, but then it's turned out and then back in again and then back out and down the ice. And having to go back and get it is Steele. Tanner Steele. Being bothered by Woodworth. Woodworth actually creates a turnover. Can't get a shot away, however. Now gets it back again. Woodworth takes a bump from Young. And you can see why Luke Woodworth has seven points in just three games this season. He is an absolute magician with that puck. Here's Kiefer Avery. Avery shot. It ends up bouncing to Canning. Canning can't get a real good shot away. But now the pass ahead for Zwicker. Zwicker. Gets it taken away from him by Noftel. Noftel all the way back into the corner. Now the puck is worked ahead with a minute left in the penalty. Avery for Canning. Canning loses it. And the puck comes squirting back out to center. Picked up there by Conta. Conta into the zone. Conta, that shot just misses high. Comes around the wall. Noftel not able to hold the zone. And coming back to pick up is Blaze McDonald. Here comes McDonald with blazing speed. Takes the shot, comes all the way around the boards. Noftel can't hold the line. 23 seconds left in the man advantage. Now Contuck, a little bit of trouble getting control of that puck. Now it'll come to Sim. Here comes Sim into, zone, into the zone. Landon Sim, the captain, takes the shot. Blocker save. Puck comes to the line. Noftel will just send it back down into the corner. Four seconds left in the man advantage. In behind the net for Sim. Sim taking a bump there from Hopkins. Sim comes out with it, tries the wrap around. 
and able to clear that one out of danger was Porter. 25 seconds left to go in the period. Puck is cleared to the line and out. As the Bombers now one for five on the power play. Puck is played ahead and out. And here comes Sim. Brandon Sim trying to get it towards the front of the net. He gets bumped off the puck by Kyle Hopkins, who flips it out and down the ice for Mayer. Mayer stops at the blue line, and that will end up having them run out of time here in the second period. Much better period overall for the Lumberjacks, in part because of the power play time that they have. Jacks 13 to 10, two period total of shots on goal, favors the Bombers 23 to 20. But goals from Landon Sim and Blaze McDonald have put the Bombers ahead 2 0. We're going to take the break for the intermission and let you get ready for the third period. We'll come back a little bit closer to the start of the third period. You are watching Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League action right here on Petter Picto Sports through Ustream.tv.
the goals. The Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm out of Cole Harbor at the Amera Center to take on the Jungle Jim Cougars. And those are the three other games other than this one here this afternoon slash evening. Third period is underway, puck into the bomber zone. Bombers in their home whites, skating from right to left on your screens here in this third period. The Lumberjacks in their road blues, skating from left to right. With the puck there is Hopkins, that's Ryan Hopkins. There's a shot, save made, Garropy, as the rebound came a little dangerously off to his left. Avery gets the puck out to center. Canning picks up there. Canning in all by himself, waiting for his line mates to change, able to stick handle around one player, but can't get through all five, and then steals the puck back again and gets a shot away that forces Porter to make the save and set the puck up over the glass and out of play. As Lucas Canning creating something out of basically nothing to get an offensive zone faceoff for his team. 101 gone here in the third period. Off of the draw, puck comes back to the line. Wrapped around the boards. Near side to the line, not out, kept in by Sellers. But Sellers' shot gets blocked by Coleman. Now Coleman trying to come back in. Cook following up, and he'll bring the puck into the zone. Cook trying to work his way around Livingston. Cook still with it behind the net. He gets rubbed out by both Livingston and Sim. And the puck goes into the far corner. We're there to pick it up. Was Coleman. He gets it back to Cook. Now it comes to the middle of the ice where Wallace gets it and plays it over to Fanning. Fanning down into the corner before he gets bumped off the puck. Now Sim chasing it down behind the net. Avoids a hit. Sim loses the puck to Coleman as he came back. And it's played ahead and out. Now Rayfuse with it. Rayfuse in, takes the shot. Goes just up over the crossbar, wraps all the way around to the far side, Coleman. Back to get it there, Contuck. Plays it off the wall, Woodworth will be the first one to it. Woodworth tries to make a pass to Mayer, but that's broken up by Wallace. Played out to center. Now Contuck will play it into the Lumberjack zone. Back with it there is Harlow. Harlow gets it ahead and shoves it down the length of the ice. That'll be an icing call. Just over two and a half gone here in the third period. Bombers continue to lead it by a score of two to nothing. If you're just joining us, the two goals, one of them a power play goal in the first period for Landon Sim, his sixth goal, 11th point of the season. The other early in the second period for Blaze McDonald, his third goal, third point of the season. Lumberjacks able to play it out to center, back to get it there, Steele. Steele will play it across to his defense partner, Young, ahead, intended to get it to McInnes, but McInnes did not get a piece of that puck, so that'll be an icing call against the Bombers. Just under three minutes gone here in this third period. game here on Petter Pitko Sports will be right after this one. It'll be the Northern Subway Selects playing a home game against the Northern Lightning of the Nova Scotia Female Midget Hockey League. The Northern Lightning out of Northern New Brunswick as opposed to the Northern Selects out of Northern Nova Scotia. So we can tell you that Northern will win the game, just which province will it be? That game coming up right after this one here on Tender Pickle Sports. There's a shot deflected up over the glass, over the netting, over the rafters, over the Statue of Liberty, over just about anything else you can think of. So it'll be an offensive zone faceoff for the Lumberjacks here as they trail it 2 nothing. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in this third period. Next Bantams game 
the Bantams play tomorrow. We will not be available to bring you that game in its entirety tomorrow because they are playing at the same time as the week's major midgets game on this sheet of ice. The major Bantams will be over on the sheet of ice right next door. So what we'll be doing is giving you updates on that game through Facebook. Stay tuned to facebook.com slash Sports tomorrow for updates on the Werewolf Major Bantam, Bantam, Major Bantam Bombers if you can't get here yourself. There's a shot from Lays McDonald. It gets blocked into the corner. Sim tries to center it. Cook got a piece of it, but it comes to McDonald anyway. Now McDonald can't find it. He's able to recover in time and tries to send the puck down low for Wallace. But Wallace can't control it. Now Contuck plays it off the wall to McDonald. McDonald trying to get it back to Wallace. Sim in there helping out as well. But it eventually gets to Cook and Cook will bring it out to center. Cook through center into the zone. Tried to drop it off for Tanner. But intercepting there was Contuck. And now Kyle Hos or Hopkins. As the Bombers get it back out to center again. Kyle Hopkins back into the, or sorry, that's, uh, no, that was Hopkins. Puck has played with a high stick, so we'll have a face-off in the Wherewell Major Bantam zone. 3.40, or sorry, 4.49 going here in the third period. Bombers still leading it 2-0. Wicker on the draw there against, that was Canning. Canning able to win the draw, but the puck stays in the zone. Zwicker now with the shot. Garropy makes the save, steers it over to the corner. Zwicker tried to get it through to Lamborn. Lamborn now trying to work against Young, plays the puck down into the corner. Zwicker, he takes a bump from Sellers. Both Zwicker and Sellers go down. And we'll have a penalty here. It's going to be a head contact call. And it appears it will go against Gage Zwicker. So we're going to see the where well Major Bantam Bombers go back to the power play. They are one for five on the power play so far in this game. And they get their sixth and seventh power plays as it is a double minor for the head contact. So the power play going back to work and here's Canning with the puck. Canning, waste no time getting a shot off. Woodworth got a piece of it though and deflected it up into the glass behind the net. Lumberjacks able to clear it down the length of the ice. Going back to get it is Canning. Woodworth right on his tail. Canning trying to pick up some speed as he comes through the center of his own zone. Loses control of the puck and Sim has to play it back for Steele. Steele now gets it ahead. McKinnis coming through center into the zone. Pass for Sim in the center of the ice. Drops it off for Canning. There's a shot and a glove save made by Porter. But he wasn't able to hang on to it. Now Avery back to the line for Steele. Steele. That one's batted out to center. 3-12 left to go here in the double minor to Gage Zwicker for the head contact. Bombers looking to get things going. Pass ahead for Avery. Here comes Avery into the zone. Drops it off for Sim. Sim trying to get it back to Avery. That's broken up by Ryan Hopkins. And the Lumberjacks send it down the length of the ice. Coming out of the net to get the puck is Garropy. Now he plays it off the side of the net himself. Picked up there by Mayer. And he takes a couple of jams at it, trying to get the puck into the side of the net there. And Garropy just able to hold the line. And now the four check of the Lumberjacks continues to impress here. As you'd never guess, they were shorthanded by how hard they're four checking. Carlo. Now he'll send it down the length of the ice. The first half of the double minor nearly expired. Landon Steele. Or sorry, Tanner Steele, excuse me. Plays the puck ahead. Kyle Hopkins sends it down the length of the ice. And going back to get it is Conta. Dylan Contact loses it to Woodworth. He gets a shot away, and Garropy has to make another shorthanded save. Now we have a player getting knocked down. Much to the dismay of the lumber.
Lumberjacks, and now we'll have a penalty against, and it's going to be another head contact call. This one coming to Jack Noftal. So we're going to play a minute 39 of four on four. And then it will be two minutes and 21 seconds of power play time for the South Shore Lumberjacks. That's our fourth head contact penalty of this game now. Two against each team. And I understand them trying to take headshots out of the game. But a lot of these head contact penalties, to be honest, at least that one there was head contact, no doubt about it. But a couple of these other ones, the head contact, I'm not entirely sure. And to see four minute penalties every time on these head contact, yes, I'm all for doing anything that will protect the heads of these players. Don't get me wrong on that. My concern, is that some of these head contact penalties are creating what is basically a special teams game to the exclusion of nearly everything else as we play four on four here for another minute and nine seconds. But again, that's my two cents and that's exactly how much it's worth. There was a chance for Coleman, but he put it up over the glass and out of play, and then it bounced down off the netting and got put into the net. But because it came off the netting, it certainly does not count. A minute and two seconds left of power play time, of, sorry, a four on four time, excuse me. Woodworth, Avery wins the draw. Puck ends up going to Harlow. He'll play it across for Kyle Hopkins. Now to Woodworth, who out of the 50 minutes, well, we've played thir 38 and a half minutes. He has to have played at least 20. Here's a shot from Kyle Woodworth, or Kyle Hopkins, and a save made there by Garropy to keep it 2-0, 37 seconds left to four on four. And here's, again, coming back to the point I was making earlier, there are some players whose names I have hardly called at all because we've had so much power play time for one team or the other that the guys who are not on the special teams units are hardly seeing the ice. There's a shot from Avery and he scores! Kiefer Avery on what looked like a pretty harmless shot was able to put it past the glove of the goaltender. Ian Porter making it three to nothing. And we were four on four, so we'll stay four on four. Nothing should come off the clock. There should be no change in the South Shore penalty. But it got taken off of the board, or was it about to expire anyway? It must have, it was pretty close to expiring either way.
100% appreciate everything that these volunteers who work in the booth do night in and night out to help support their teams by giving up their time and all that. My only concern is that the people who are in there should be given workshops on the role of the off-ice officials, the rules that relate to off-ice officials, such as penalties and whatnot, and workshops on how to work the equipment in the various booths that they're going to be working in so that we don't get delays like this from a lack of experience. And again, I fully praise these volunteers for giving them their time. There's a shot and Garrafee makes a save. I just would like to see, and I'm not asking, I, I think what I'm asking for is not unreasonable. I'm not asking for them to pay out of pocket for these workshops. I'm asking for Hockey Nova Scotia or the leagues or the host minor hockey association to provide them with these workshops so that they know what they are doing and we don't get these lengthy four and five minute delays to deal with these problems with the clock like we just had. We are now in a South Shore power play as the player came out of the box. That was, I believe, Zwicker, if I remember correctly. Now Ryan Hopkins with the shot. That goes high and wide. What's lost in all of this is that it is now a 3-0 lead for the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers. Ryan Hopkins looking for Cook with a deflection, but missed the target. Now Woodworth will chase the puck down. Gives to Hopkins. For Cook, Cook actually, or that wasn't Cook, that was uh, Huskins who kicked the puck at the net. Now Woodworth looking for a bit of an off-speed pitch, but ends up putting it wide. Now Ryan Hopkins again, trying to go to Woodworth, but getting a stick on that was Cannon. Now centered for Huskins. Goes over to Woodworth again. Woodworth now trying to throw it towards the front of the net. Puck is played into the corner, and Cannon will send it down the length of the ice. 1.15 left to go in the double minor to chase Nicholas for the head contact. Working his way up with it, here's Ryan Hoskin, uh, Hopkins. There's a shot and he scores! Off the shoulder of Garapi and into the net. And that will make it a 3-1 game. So the Bombers score four on four. And then the Lumberjacks on the power play there. Fifth power play of the game. They go to one for five. And it's now 3-1, as you can see, in favor of the Wearwell Major Man and Bombers with under nine and a half left to go. And here comes Rayfuse. Rayfuse with the shot. Save me. Rayfuse in behind the net. Gives the puck to Cook. Cook looking to get out in front. Cook gets it back again after he lost it momentarily. Now McKay out at center. McKay loses the puck and it's sent back into the bomber zone. Going back to get it there, Livingston. He wraps it around the boards to the near side. Picking up there is McKay. McKay able to get it out to center, but then Connors dumps it right back in again. Settled down right by Garropy for Sellers. Gets it ahead and out to center. Dump back in again by Connors, but H Huskins touches just offside. So we'll have a face off on the Lumberjack side of center with 8.38 left to go here in the third. Bombers lead it by two. Off of the draw, Avery, the most recent goal scorer on a three-point night, I do believe. If I heard the assist calls correctly on the first two goals, he certainly scored the third goal. Now a chance, but Lamborn was in just a bit offside. With 8.19 left to go here in the third. As the Bombers trying to turn the clock into a bit of an ally. 
Avery off of the draw, plays it back. Steele works it ahead. Harlow gives to Woodworth for Huskins. And there's a shot. And another save by Garropy. 8.08 now left on the clock. As fans of the Bombers have to be feeling like this clock is moving painfully slow. In part because we are getting so many whistles. Here the pace slowing down to a bit of a crawl. There's a chance. And Garropy makes the save and hangs on for another face-off. Just five more seconds coming off of the clock on that sequence. Coleman and Sim to take the draw. Off of the draw, the Bombers get possession. Out comes Wallace, he sends it down. Back to get it, Ryan Hopkins. Plays it up the wall, it's picked up there by the Bombers, but turned right back over again. And now Coleman gets it ahead for Cook. Cook with the shot, Garropy with the glove save. And another face off, 7.38 left to go. And that back up and down the ice only took not even 30 seconds off of the clock. And again, it's going to be Sim taking the draw. This time he's taking it against Swicker. Bombers able to get the puck out to center. Pass comes across for Hopkins. That's Ryan Hopkins bringing it into the zone. He tries to make a centering pass. Livingston was there. Now tried to get it through to Woodworth. Woodworth fans on it. And Sim will pick up. Landon Sim pushes it ahead. Knocked down there at the line by Huskins for Woodworth. And he doesn't miss the net by much with that one. By the way, Ryan Hopkins with that goal should mention. I don't know if it got announced. I don't believe there were any assists. But for Ryan Hopkins, his third goal, seventh point of the season, tying him with Luke Woodworth for the team lead in points. Woodworth, of course, just playing in his fourth game, while Ryan Hopkins is playing in his seventh game. Off of the draw. Bombers get the puck and send it down the length of the ice, and that'll be another icing. We're down under seven minutes now. But again, this clock just slowly, slowly, slowly ticking its way down. Although, we're at one of those unique moments where it's 6.58, and it's 6.58. Just a weird coincidence, just the stuff that you notice when you happen to be in the rink. 6.58 was on the clock. We're now down closer to 6.45. Livingston working there, losing it to Coleman. Livingston battling to get it back again. He loses it now, and Cook will pick up the puck. Cook. Comes out from behind the net, back to Connors. Connors shot, gets blocked by, uh, that was uh, Canning. Now Cook working against Sellers. Cook plays it to the front of the net. It's cleared away. And now Canning will lead the rush out. Canning tees it up. That one goes up into the glass. Wraps around the wall for McKay. Comes back around to the near side Canning. He sends it back down low. Now as they battle in the corner, Kyle Hopkins gets it ahead. And leading the way out will be Zwicker. Here comes Zwicker into the bomber zone. Zwicker throws it to Woodward. Woodward, one nice move. There's a shot to save by Garropy. Puck comes to the line. Right in front, Woodward, one chance. Woodward, the second chance, he scores. Luke Woodward. His fifth goal, eighth point of the season. You had a feeling it was a matter of time for this guy. As he was averaging better than two points a game coming in. And he's averaging at least 50 minutes of the time on the ice for his team. They, we played just a little over 54 minutes and he has to have played, like I said, 27 of them. He's played at least half of this game. It seems like every time I turn around, he's back out there on the ice. 
Here's Young bringing the puck in. He loses it at the blue line as we're now down to a one goal game. Five seventeen left to go here. Puck comes out to center. Backing up with it there. Now playing it over to Steele. Steele gets it ahead for McKay. McKay, one nice move, takes a shot, save made. Puck was still loose, but McKay couldn't get to it in time. Or sorry, that was 17, not 12. Hard to tell the way the shirt was tucked into the back. There's Noftal. Down low, Wallace. For Sim. Sim behind the net. Sim plays it around the boards to the far wall. Cook gets to it. Now Wallace will get it and play it back to the line. Contact. His shot doesn't get all the way through. As now out comes Ryan Hopkins. Hopkins sends the puck down low, goes chasing after himself, throws it to the front of the net. There's a chance for Coleman. Now a chance for Hopkins. First one missed the net, the second one. Save made by Garropy. Puck is down below the goal line. He tried to get it out. Tried to find Mayer with that, that doesn't work. Now here's Cook with the puck. Cook to the line. Shot blocked by Sim. Sim and Cook go into the wall after it. There's Woodworth out there again. Now there's a shot. Puck comes in on Garrity, and he'll cover up and hang on. 4-0-1 left to go here in the third period. comes back to Kyle Hopkins. Woodworth with the one-timer, and Garrett nearly fooled Garropy as it came just inside the post. Woodworth again, down low, tried to play it out front. That gets intercepted, wrapped around the boards, and Connors couldn't hold the line. Connors chasing it down out at center ice, gets it to Huskins. Huskins into the zone. Hoskins still with it down into the corner, takes a bump, loses it, played around the wall there, and out comes Avery, key for Avery, one goal already tonight, takes the shot, that gets blocked by Kyle Hopkins, now ahead and out to center ice, and we're going to have a penalty here, interference is going to be the call against McDonald, with 3.03 left to go, McDonald a little frustrated. And now the timeout will be taken by the South Shore Lumberjacks and their head coach, Sean Woodward. penalty 
kill, leading by a goal. Three minutes left to go. There's a shot from Woodworth. It goes off a stick, up over the glass and out of play. Just five seconds coming off of that clock. To call this power play a big one for the Lumberjacks would be putting it mildly. Here's Ryan Hopkins to Woodworth. Back to Hopkins. Hopkins for Cook. Cook can't get a shot away as Garropy knocked the puck. Now Sim gets it. And Young will get it out and down the length of the ice. 2.40 left to go in the game. 1.35 left to go in the penalty. Working up with the puck is Hopkins. He gets it across to Cook. Cook into the zone. Got it to Woodworth who just deflected it up on net. Steered aside. Now back to Hopkins again. Hopkins over to Woodworth far side. Woodworth another shot save main. Rebound was there and the puck went in but it's waved off by the referee. The puck is clearly in the back of the net. Exactly why it was waved off. I'm going to guess that it was because the puck went in after the whistle blew, but I am honestly not 100% sure. Woodward, his shot gets blocked, gets it back again, plays it to Hopkins at the line. Back to Woodward, back to Ryan Hopkins. Hopkins gets the shot away, and Garrafey takes that one right in the bomber crest. 55 seconds left in the power play, 158. Left to go in the third period. And coming out of the net. No. Porter comes out of the net after the draw is won. And Kyle Hopkins coming out there to join what is now a six on four. Hopkins, Ryan that was, to Woodworth. Throws it through the crease. Comes all the way back around down to the near side. Huskins gets it to Cook. Cook centers it. Intercepted by Avery, and he'll send it the length of the ice. 28 seconds left in the penalty to Blaze McDonald. An interference call. And here comes Ryan Hopkins with the puck. Ryan Hopkins into the zone. Still on the puck, stops. Plays it back to Woodworth. Woodworth comes near side. Huskins fans on that attempt. Now a wraparound attempt by Mayer. Now Kyle, now there's another shot. And the puck goes up into the glass. We're back to six on five. Into the final minute, shot, save, rebound is there. Puck is cleared to the wall. Avery looking to get it out. Ryan Hopkins will keep it in. Off of Garropy, Huskins gets it behind the net. Woodworth, now Ryan Hopkins. There's a shot deflected. And Garropy able to stay with it and make the save. Back to Ryan Hopkins again. Ryan Hopkins tried to center and it goes off a skate, comes back to him. Now that pass gets intercepted and out comes Blaze McDonald. Blaze McDonald finds the net. The empty net goal wraps it up for the Bombers. It's 4-2. Blaze McDonald, his second of the game, his fourth of the season, and that will do it. For all intents and purposes, 4-2 now for the Bombers. Just 28.6 seconds left to go. Blaze McDonald puts his second of the game into the net to seal the victory. Off of the draw. Hawkinson back into the Lumberjack zone. The goal announced as unassisted. McKay sends the puck in deep. Going back after it there. Several players, including Zwicker. Also in there is Harlow. Zwicker will come out with it, but just five seconds left on the clock. Back to the line, knocked off. He plays it over. Lamborn intercepts and turns it down the ice, but that will do it. The final score. The Werewell Major Bantam Bombers. Win over the South Shore Lumberjacks, 4-2. to two. Therapy, 42 saves on 44 shots. Plays McDonald with two goals. Kiefer Avery with, I believe, three points. As 
we get the handshakes down at center ice. A great game. As the Bombers win this one four to two, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna close the stream down and then reopen it for the uh, for the game between the Northern Subway Selects and the Northern Lightning. The Nova Scotia Female Major Hockey League, Northern Nova Scotia against Northern New Brunswick. For the purpose of uploading to YouTube later, I do have to make sure that they are two separate videos, which is why I need to close the stream off for a minute and then open it right back up. Actually, I'll wait till after the flood, because they are going to flood first. So we'll be back in just a little bit to get you ready for the Subway Northern Selects and the Northern Lightning. Until then, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. Final score one last time. Where well, Major Bantam Bombers defeat the South Shore Lumberjacks 4-2. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a few minutes.